on to the next question, and it's from Chuck Wendelberger. Chuck, go ahead. Given these issues, excuse me. Given these issues, maintaining quality education, balancing the budget, growing business and jobs, and health care, please rank them according to your priorities and briefly explain why. Senator Darling, you will go first with the first three questions. Okay, the priorities clearly are from the election to get control of spending debt and deficit, balance the budget without raising taxes, and grow jobs in the economy. And that's, that's what I've been a leader in doing. Our priorities have been clear education. We gave the, our school districts the tools that they needed to offset the cuts. And you know in Menominee Falls and Hamilton, Sussex, and in Mequon and Fox Point, all over my district except for Milwaukee where they did not take advantage of the tools, and Kenosha, and Beloit, all the other school districts in the state are doing all right, and they have balanced their budget. In fact, Emily Kazelias from Brown Deer said they never would have been able to do what they did if it hadn't been for Act 10 and the tools we gave them. You've heard those stories all over the state. Appleton, I mean, saved millions of dollars. Nequan, I'll give you that example, they saved two and a half million dollars with the tools. Manomany Falls had already signed contracts, but they said, you know what, we could, we could save millions of dollars because they got a better deal on their health care. And what happened was, often, the last teacher in is no longer the first one out. Most of the school districts have said, thank you, we have not had massive teacher layoffs, and we can keep the good teachers to be with us. That's really significant. So education is the number one priority. Seniors, number two, I mentioned the property tax freeze, senior care, and not raising taxes. Vets, we put in $10 million into our Vets Trust Fund in this tough time, because we thought if you fight for our state, we're gonna take care of you when you come home. Those are some of our priorities, but overall the taxpayer, we're gonna protect them, because that's what people said they wanted us to do in the last election. I, I think the comments on education are just very, uh, very misleading. Senator Darling has chosen to cherry pick a few districts that aren't going to be harmed by what they've done in this budget. 97% of the school districts across the state are going to be harmed. And for her to say there have been no massive layoffs is again not, not a sincere answer. There have been teacher retirements and teachers are retiring and they're not being replaced. This is not how we take care of the quality education that we have in our state. It's something that we need to preserve and something that we need to value. I'm also talking to teachers, um, in, uh, to school board members and to administrators who are saying, you know, we're going to be able to get by this year, but I'm not sure about the year after that or the year after that or the year after that. They feel that education is headed towards a cliff and they're not sure how they're going to stop it from, stop this bad train from happening. So you can't cherry pick for a few examples. We have not preserved education, and I can't see how Senator Darling can say that's her priority. All right, that was Representative Pash's rebuttal. Uh, you now have two minutes to answer the question. Do you want to ask again? Given these issues, maintaining quality education, balancing the budget, growing business and jobs, and health care, please rank them according to your priorities and briefly explain why. Actually, those all go together because we have to make sure that we have priorities with, with education if we want to grow jobs. And w another way to do that is to be thoughtful and considerate about ways to bring down health care costs. It's really hard to pick out one of those because it's going to have a ripple effect. If you got education, you're going to take away one of the attractions that people have for moving to the state. They move here because we have a top quality public school education. And they want to have jobs here because they want to develop that partnership between the university schools and the technical colleges and make sure that we can train our workers to, to be competitive in this marketplace, to be able to have jobs that allow them to support a family that come with benefits. And we have to do this in a fiscally responsible way. There have been a number of issues in the budget that have been very fiscally irresponsible. We closed a corporate tax loophole in the last session because we believe there should be shared sacrifice. And what happened in this session is that loophole was opened up. So while mom and pop and all of us are paying our fair share, there are corporations across the state that will be allowed to, to take tax breaks, but not for creating jobs. They just get to take a tax break because they're a special interest group. 
We aren't taking care of our seniors either. You don't cut transportation. Transportation is key to getting people to work. It's key to getting people to school. It's key to getting people around the community. And I was talking to seniors yesterday, and they do not feel that their issues have been addressed by this budget. They do not feel that at all. With the cap on family care, many people are concerned that they're going to be ending up in nursing homes or that family members will be forced to quit their jobs to take care of a loved one in, in home. This is not a budget that values its citizens and does anything really to create jobs. To create jobs, we have to make our state the state that people want to move to because they know that there's a good quality of life here, there's an education system here, and there will be partnerships so family supporting jobs can continue to grow and develop. Just a comment uh, for seniors. The best thing we can do for seniors is not put more taxes on them, especially if you are on, on uh, fixed income, Doyle, Pash, raised taxes, uh, uh, property taxes, you name the taxes, the phone bills, the car insurance, the, it was just amazing. Four billion dollars in fees and taxes. But I want to tell you, the best thing we can do for our state is to grow jobs and to have certainty that Wisconsin is going forward, that we are fiscally responsible. The same debate is happening at the federal level all over the country. We need certainty for our Wisconsin families. And I think that it is here now because we, we balanced our budget without raising taxes and we are attracting jobs, 39,000 new jobs, twice the national average, which is phenomenal. And that's what people asked us to do and that's what we did. And actually, Menominee Falls, saved a lot of money that they could put into the classroom by changing their health insurance carrier. They went from the WEA to another carrier and they saved a you know, million dollars. Mequon did the same thing. So we are putting more money into the classroom because we are saving options, giving options for more competitive searching for health care and the contributions to pensions make it easier to put money in the classroom. And I'm very proud of that.